Well, folks, welcome back to the second ever video on second ever full length video on Renix P Sale. Today, I'm taking you guys inside my elusive shed to give you an inside look at sort of the back end. I mean, it's kind of the back end. It's kind of just like a lot of the inventory that I currently have listed on eBay. Because uh, that's just something that I've heard that people are interested in seeing. So I'm going to just pull, start pulling these bins out and kind of do like a little bit of a show and tell on uh, some of the kind of stuff I have listed right now. That's, that's pretty much it. So in this bin right here, I actually just sold one of these bad boys today. F1 Formula 1 2019. I think that went for like 20 something bucks or something like that. And I right now have a ton of sealed Vita games, which is uncommon. I bought a whole lot of these at the Midwest Gaming Classic Convention. Uh, I, I filmed it, but the footage wasn't that good. It didn't get incorporated into a video, but yeah, we've got a whole bunch of these and they've still on the cases. I took them out of the cases to do the pictures, but the cases, I put them back in. They still have the price stickers on them. So I'll know how much money I made when I sold them. Um, people sometimes ask me questions about like my back end system for bookkeeping and stuff. People will sometimes ask me questions about like, how do I know, how do I keep track of how much profit I'm making on each item? And the answer is I don't. I have absolutely no idea. Um, well, I have some idea because I keep track of the profit that I'm making on the whole business month to month. And I also study my sold listings. Um, most of the stuff that I sell, I remember pretty clearly what I paid for it. So I'll go into like Amazon, uh, like my Amazon seller app, take a look at my orders and see, oh, this uh, you know Zelda Wii game sold for 40 bucks. You know, after fees, maybe I'm making like 31 and I paid 15, that's pretty good. Uh, and I'll know for the future that this, in this condition, is selling around this price currently. So that's how I keep track of like, oh shoot, I didn't make as money as, as much money as I thought I would on this, or maybe I made more than I expected on that, rather than trying to fill out an entire spreadsheet of literally thousands of games that I sell every year. I mean, that would be a full-time job basically in itself. And as a one-man, one and a half man operation at this point i've just i've got to be as zealous with my time as i can so here we've got a whole bunch more random stuff uh puppeteer sealed check that out a sealed puppeteer i don't know what i have that listed for all this stuff by the way that i'm going through today is currently listed on my ebay store if anyone is interested neo geo pocket pick that guy up at the ultimate retro collection buyout that i did recently this is a little bit of a naughty story Got this Pokemon Heart Gold version uh, at my first ever video game convention. I bought it alongside Soul Silver. Soul Silver was authentic. This guy was not. So unfortunately, it's not even listed. You're not allowed, I don't think, really to sell uh, reproductions on eBay. But uh, here it is in the bin. Maybe it will be forever. Um, what else do we have in here that's interesting? We have Cross Edge. Is this sealed as well? It is, yeah, brand new sealed, even with a uh, completely free old rubber band on there. Someone's gonna get a nice little throw in. Um, we've got Luigi U. We've got some complete in box Game Boy Advance games here. Check this out. This one's definitely the best. People were giving me a hard time for this one, Boktai on the GBA because I paid like maybe 60 or 80 bucks for a bundle of uh, GBA games. And then later the guy that I brought bought them from brought out the boxes and I was like, well, let me at least give you something, you know, 20 extra dollars for the boxes as well. Um, this game is like a 150 to $200 game alone when it is complete in the box. And people were giving me grief in the comments like, this guy's giving bad offers. I can't believe he's lowballing this guy, blah, blah, blah. And of course, out of, uh, you know, 50 plus offers that I made in that one day, they'll single out the one that they think is a low ball and grill me for it because that's just what hater hanks do, folks. But the actual answer to it is, I, in reality, I don't know the values of everything that I'm making offers on. I just don't. I'm not a video game encyclopedia. Boktai is a game that I have literally never sold before. So that one was a new one on me. And when you're making dozens and dozens of offers in a single day you have to be conservative if you don't you're going to end up losing your butt on a good number of the deals 
Um, so sometimes you win. Of course, nobody commented on how I kind of overpaid for this Neo Geo Pocket in two games. Um, I paid like 175. I'll probably end up making like 50 or 75 bucks on this game and the or this system in the three games. But definitely not a purchase I would make again. Um, nonetheless, all the comments are about the one where I accidentally lowballed somebody. Um, and it was it, eh, it was a pretty bad lowball because it was probably it was probably like. I don't know, 300, maybe 350 worth of stuff that I ended up getting for like 100, so could be worse. But anyway, that's my rant on that subject. Here we've got all of my uh, like PlayStation and Dreamcast games. Uh, this actually just a month ago or so was completely full up to here. These have been selling through pretty well. My sell through rate on eBay is crazy. This one is a nice little guy. What's that called? Uh, Elementor, Elemental Gear Bolt. Got this one in a video at a video game store for like 50. I think I have it listed for 100 or so, if I'm not mistaken. What else do we have? We've got Bust a Move. This is a lot of stuff that just doesn't uh, doesn't sell quick enough on Amazon for it to be worth it. Uh, or it's disc only, and that stuff, yeah, also is kind of risky to put on Amazon. What else do we have? That guy, Grand Star Saga. Um, one question that we had on the last video that I wanted to address is somebody said, I can't get my head around why stuff sells for so much more on Amazon than it does on eBay. And I'll give you a few answers to that question. By the way, if you have other resale related questions that you want me to address in future Renix pre-sale videos, drop those in the comments right now. I'll try to remember next time to look at them before. Um, <laughs> you can have me pause if you need to. That's cool. <laughs> Um, I'm going to try to address those kinds of comments uh, in future videos as well, just to do a little bit more Q&A with you guys. But the reasons that stuff sells for more on Amazon is a few things. One, their pricing system with the buy box allows a little bit of room for arbitrage when you are selling through fulfillment by Amazon because um, when you click on an item initially, you only see one price and you have to find the little like blue hyperlink view more items to see all of the listed prices for that game. And oftentimes that price is not the lowest price, but Amazon will put that one as the front because they're fulfilling it and it's in very good condition. So that's the reason why when I'm selling games like these that are in very good condition, they have the cases and manual and everything, and I'm sending them off to Amazon, fulfilling them through their warehouse, they often do sell for a premium. Other more generic reasons are uh, easy returns, quick shipping, brand loyalty. People love buying stuff on Amazon. It's their go-to and oftentimes they assume that it's the lowest price that they can possibly get for an item when in reality a lot of the times it's just not true. Um, hopefully that's a little bit helpful for you and why uh, I, I love selling on Amazon so much. I'm able to get some solid premiums. This right here is a bin of just like miscellaneous controllers and components that I keep out here to pair with systems. I don't know why I have so many NES controllers here because to be honest, I rarely sell NES consoles. I don't have the kind of uh, TV that I need to test them and I hate testing consoles and oftentimes NESs need the pins replaced and I don't know how to do that because my brain is small. Um, here we've got all the bins that I use to trade in uh, to put trade in games in. The ones that are worth like eh, 10 or less dollars retail. I'll just throw in bins and keep them out here. Um, this one is actually full still because these are all rejects from when I went to Game Hub. He didn't want any of these bad boys, unfortunately, because he's got like 50 of each of them already. And so, yeah, here they are. I'm going to have to take them to Game Exchange or something. I don't even know what I'm going to do with these. Maybe some of them I'll just harvest for cases. Oh, geez. But yeah, this bin is full of those, this bin is full of those, and this bin, they're all rejects, so I'm gonna have to make an entire other trip. I don't know if I'm gonna make another video of trying to trade these things in because like, I just, I don't want my content, especially on the main channel, to get super redundant. And I've made three trade-in videos in the last few months, so we'll see what ends up happening with that, I'm not really sure. Here we've got a bunch of hats. Hats are maybe my second favorite niche just because they're so easy to list, they're so easy to ship and easy to store. These down here, you guys may remember if you've been watching uh, the main channel for a long time, 
these Star Wars hats I got at the world's longest yard sale like a year and a half ago for a buck a piece. I still have a good chunk of them, but I probably sell one or two of them a month in the like $13 range. Got them all for a buck a piece. So we're well into the profit on those bad boys. Some other nice ones that we have in here, a vintage Kentucky hat. These also are all on eBay, by the way. Um, we've got Harvard. We've got TaylorMade for any golfers out there. Ooh, this one's a little bit hot right here. NBA World Champs 1993 Bulls. We've got a Caterpillar hat as well. What's this guy? We've got the Kentucky Derby. I might need to keep that. That's actually kind of sweet. Anyway, love selling hats. Definitely a thing to keep an eye out for at the thrift stores, at the yard sales. What else do I have to show you guys? This is a box of stuff that I pulled out of my grandma's attic that I have yet to list because um, I'm, I'm, I'm a lazy son of a gun. Um, this guy, I put this on last week and you can be the judge. Does this make me look like uh, Samuel L. Jackson? What do you think? What's in your wallet? I'm not Lawrence Fishburne. <laughs> <laughs> Probably more so with the bald head, I would say. Um, this one actually is one that I just figured out today. This also was a grandma's attic find, Whitefish Lake Golf Club, that uh, is not is not worth selling on eBay. But gosh, this I mean, the print is just so nice. I, I couldn't bring myself to part with it. Sheffield Mint Fine English Pewter Tanker. This is all stuff that like... A lot of it, I would probably look up and realize that it's not worth anything. In reality, I should probably take this whole box to Goodwill. But you guys know how it goes in the resale business. Sometimes you just you get in over your head and you put stuff off and it sits and it accumulates and you come across it six months later and you say to yourself, I probably should take that to Goodwill. And you still don't because you are a lazy piece of trash. Next up. Oh, this is a miscellaneous bin. We don't even need to look in here. We've got like a Guitar Hero dongle. We've got a complete Game Shark CDX. We've got, what is this? WWF Warzone complete? What do you know? I didn't even know that was in there. I, if I if it sold, I probably wouldn't have been able to find it. Um, some random controllers and stuff that I'm trying to sell in here. For, I don't know. I don't know, probably asking too much money and that's why they haven't. Folks. That's basically the uh, grand tour of this outdoor shed, my second shed, by the way, which I built with my bare hands from a kit that I got from Home Depot. Um, very proud of it. And hope you guys enjoyed this little mini tour of the behind the scenes of the eBay operation. Subscribe to the channel if you want completely inconsistent and infrequent content behind the scenes. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching and until next time, I will catch you all on the flip.